I taught an online programming course that was completely free. It was open for anyone to enroll in, and just about everyone from curious high school students all the way to established professionals looking to learn something new enrolled. Like with any course, we started with the basics and we slowly worked our way up. By the end, we had built our own version of interactive tic-tac-toe. But like all good things, this course eventually came to an end. And everyone said their goodbyes and thank yous and went back to their own lives. I never heard from any of those students again besides one person. He asked me not to use his name today, so for today, I'll just call him Cole. About a month after the course, Cole sent me an email asking for help with a bit of code he was working on. Cole was working on a little script to automate part of his job. He worked at a small accounting firm, and part of his everyday responsibilities was to send every single one of his clients a transaction summary. Right now, he was taking thousands of transactions and manually sorting through them, and then putting them in about 40 different emails before sending them out one by one. This was taking him three hours every single day. These were three hours every single day where he was mindlessly copying and pasting, and another three hours every single day where it just wasn't very fulfilling to him. So of course I was happy to help him out. When I pulled up his code, I was very pleasantly surprised. He was doing things that I'd never taught in my course before. One thing that really stood out was that he was programmatically sending out emails. Now, this isn't the hardest thing in the world to do, but it certainly wasn't a beginner-level skill. So out of curiosity, I asked him where he'd learned how to do this. And he simply told me that he went to this one website called Google.com and typed in how to send emails in Python, which was the language we were using. Easy as that. So we started looking through this code together, and we quickly found out the issue with it. Essentially, he had a single off-by-one error. His code was trying to send out 43 emails instead of the 42 he actually needed to send out. We changed that one number, and everything worked just fine. Uh, he said his thank yous, and then we parted ways once more. A few days later, he gave me a call again to give me a quick update. He let me know that his code was working fine and that his clients had no idea that anything had changed. In fact, his code was working so well that he had even created copies for his coworkers to use. So now, not only was Cole saving himself three hours every single day, but he was saving three hours a day for all of his coworkers as well. This was awesome. This is exactly what computer science was invented to do. Couldn't have been happier for him. So we chatted a little bit longer, and then we parted ways. Before we did, I let, him I let him know to give me a call if there was ever anything I could help him with again. I didn't hear from him again for about another six months or so, until he called me out of the blue one day. After our usual pleasantries, he really caught me off guard. Cole offered me a job. Apparently, in the last couple of months, he had written about a dozen additional programs, and they were helping automate a vast majority of his firm's workload. Because of those, his firm was able to do things faster, better, and more importantly for their clients, cheaper. There's only one issue, though. Cole didn't want to keep writing code. And his firm was okay with that, but they had asked him to hire a programmer. I was shocked to hear this. Every time I had worked with Cole, he seemed like he was super interested and engaged in everything we were doing. So, of course, I asked him about it. And he told me that, although he's kind of okay at programming, he's being pretty modest, and that sometimes he even found it fun, it's just not what he wanted to do in life. It's not what he was passionate about. He wanted to be an accountant. In fact, his biggest professional fear was that people would know him as a programmer rather than a really good accountant who just happens to know how to code. As a programmer myself, that didn't fully click with me, but it did make sense in a way. Everyone has different passions that they, they want to pursue. So we chatted a little bit longer again, and then we, I never heard from Cole after that day. Don't worry, he's fine. Nothing happened to him. <laughs> um, but, but essentially, Cole realized something that nobody else ever seems to realize. He realized that computer science itself is not an industry on its own. It's a way of thinking. It's a tool for us to use in, in different fields, different aspects of our life. As, as humankind, we've been creating tools since the dawn of time, and we've been using them to achieve things with far fewer resources than ever before. Now, computer science is the most powerful tool we've ever invented. It allows us to solve our problems with unprecedented efficiency. Cole obviously realized this, so he went out and he learned how to use computer science, and then he used it to become the best accountant in town. Now that, it, now that he had achieved his goal, he was ready to put this tool down. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. 
Just because you learn how to use a tool or skill doesn't mean you have to use it every single day. You just use it when you find it to be useful. Today, Cole runs his own accounting firm, and he's giving every other firm in this town a run for their money. Essentially, by his, his firm adopting computer science, they're struggling to just keep up. In the modern digital world that we live in today, anyone who knows how to use computer science to their own advantage has an exponential competitive advantage over those that don't. I know this is hard to accept, and it's even scary to think about, but it's true. The real question here is, is this a fair competitive advantage? No, it's actually not. And the reason for that is such a limited percentage of our population has access to any good computer science education. Emphasis on good there. An even smaller percentage of us are even encouraged to pursue it. But this is a solvable problem, and we've actually already started working on it. Governments everywhere have begun to mandate that their schools start teaching the basics of computer science. But that, that's not all it takes. Just because we decide we want to teach something doesn't mean we can just do it overnight. We have to build out the educational infrastructure to allow us to do so. Let's take a quick look at how we taught the world how to read. If you look at this graph, you can see that somewhere around the 1900s, we decided that reading was important. After that, it took us nearly a century to teach the majority of the population how to do so. This wasn't because we didn't want to do it quickly. This was because we had to build out that literacy education infrastructure. Now, it's only in the last decade or so that we came to the same conclusion about computer science. We just can't build that infrastructure overnight. We've actually already taken one swing at it, though, and it didn't really work out for us. Our swing at it was through MOOCs, or Massive Open Online Courses. Although these provide the scale that we needed to teach computer science, they lost almost all of their effectiveness. Less than 10% of those online courses were actually completed, and a majority of them could actually be completed without ever writing a single line of code. That's kind of like getting your driver's license by only taking the written exam and skipping the practical. It just doesn't make sense. But even with such a small percentage of our population only knowing how to code, which is about actually around 0.27%, Look at what we've already achieved with it. We will eventually get to that point where everyone knows how to code. I can promise you that. But what, what happens when we do get there? What happens when everyone knows basic computer science skills? What happens when everyone has the same competitive advantage that Cole does? Honestly, this is the most exciting part of the whole thing to me. When everyone has the same competitive advantage, nobody actually has an advantage. When everyone is put on the same playing field, it's going to create insane amounts of competition. If that's the whole point, what's the point of doing all this? Well, it's simple. Competition is good. It's been one of the strongest driving forces in our society's progression for ages now. Competition breeds innovation. By teaching everyone the basic computer science, we're raising that bar for innovation. One day, someone will create a better tool than computer science to give them an edge over everyone else. I have no idea what that will be, and neither does anyone else. If we did, we'd already be doing it right now. In fact, even if somebody from the future came back in time to tell us what that future innovation tool, whatever it might be, is, I doubt we could even comprehend it. It'd be like somebody from today going back 100 years or so and trying to explain a smartphone to the first person that they find. Sure, bits and pieces of it might make sense, like it runs on electricity and has a battery, but everything else is just way too abstract. I know this all sounds a little bit crazy, but it's actually a cycle that's been happening for a while now. The only reason we have a wheelbarrow today is because somebody somewhere wanted to move something from point A to point B faster than the next guy. The only reason we have industrial machines is because somebody wanted to make more of something faster than his competition down the street. One day, someone will invent a better tool than computer science. But right now, that's the best that we have. And when that day comes, we're going to start this whole cycle of, of adoption, competition, and innovation all over again. Like I said, I don't know what that next thing after computer science is going to be, but I do know we won't be able to figure it out until we teach everyone the basics of programming. Thank you.